This is with John Friedman. Our guest today is Thomas M. Costigan, author of a new book called You Are Here, and author of The Green Book, a bestseller a couple years ago. Tom, welcome to, to Market Watch. Thanks, John. Tell us about You Are Here. Well, it's not welcome to Market Watch. I already contributed a column to Market Watch. I was going to say Watch, that. So say that. Market Watch columnist mm -hmm. in esteem here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks. But this book's a little bit different because it actually takes you out into the world. So it's what you do in your everyday life and how that affects places all over the world, whether it's the Arctic or the deserts or the jungles or the middle of the ocean, and what you do and how it affects the world. There are many books about the environment, as you well know. Mm -hmm. What's different about You Are Here than the other books? Because I think it speaks in familiar terms and it doesn't get into the academic or the science and you become with me on the journey. You become you know, sort of a, a tag along person so that you actually see the places that we talk about. We see the Arctic melting. We see the deserts. We see the seas as they're being polluted or whatever. And then you get solutions as to how you can make simple shifts in your daily life, how to solve these things. So it's not just science in a box. It's something that you can actually go out. It's an adventure story, so it's exciting, it's familiar. It's something that I think everyone's going to read because it's, it has so many different links to things that we do, and we may not have any idea about the things that we do in our life and how they affect different places and people and things all around the world. The Green Book, your last book, was a huge success, a bestseller, New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. What was your motivation after doing that book for doing this one? Well, I provided about 400 solutions, more than 400 solutions for your everyday life in the Green Book. But that was more data. This, I really wanted to put images with actions. So the polar bear is drowning, if you will, with the light switch and how those are connected. And then I wanted to take that to everything that we do and show you in the world how you are indeed affected and linked to all these people and places and things. So it's really about putting images with actions and creating that familiarity and then going out into the world and seeing the butterfly effect of what we do in our life. Where'd you go for the book? I went up to the, uh, the Arctic Circle and visited a, a small village there that's being displaced because of climate change and sea level rise and you know places where I should have been able to walk over to Siberia on the ice, waves were crashing to shore. I went to Jerusalem um, mostly because 50% of the population in the world uh, is familiar with different sites and images that that city holds, and they're decaying at the fastest rate in history. So the World Monument Fund in 2007 said that global climate change is actually the leading cause of endangered sites all around the world, which means Mount Rushmore or Boston's monuments or Big Ben even are all decaying at a faster rate in history because of climate change. And then I was over in Mumbai, which is uh, obviously Bombay, the new name, and just showed what may be our future because there's so much mass population on a small piece of land, so much susceptibility to climate change, so much waste, and so much concern about natural resources in order to serve the population. Um, then I went to, to Borneo, Borneo Island, which is a virtual Eden, uh, if you will, just to see what was going on there with species. It's the most species-rich place on Earth. They have orangutans and monkeys and elephants and jaguars and wild boars and all this amazing, amazing you know, jungle that you can hike around in. But at the same time, just because of a simple food ingredient that we use, palm oil, which is in our soaps, toothpaste, french fries, all sorts of things, we're ravaging the lower uh, forests of Borneo and displacing a lot of these species. And I was at uh, Linfen City, which has been widely considered the most polluted place on Earth Where's for that? years and years. It's in China. It's in Inner Mongolia. People walk around with surgical masks. And sure. I went there thinking that the pollution would be something only a, a barometer of some type could discern in terms of air pollution. But really, it's like Blade Runner there. It's this am amazing, amazing scene that's just dark and dank and filled with smog. Sometimes you can't even see your hand in front of your face. And then I spent several days out in the jungle living off the land in Brazil. Uh, in the Amazon, just seeing what it's like to be you one saw it of the all. species. You were all over the world, literally. You were everywhere in the world. What was your impression? Are you, are you hopeful or pessimistic about the world's view toward the environment? Uh, extremely hopeful. And I think it's because of people wanting to do the right thing. You know, we all think we're so individual and we all think we're so unique as human beings, but we're one of about 1.6 million species on Earth. And we're pretty much the same. And we all pretty much have the same DNA in terms of ethics and everything else, where we want to do the right thing if we're given the right information. You know, they've, they've done studies on brain waves where if you actually do the right thing, you'll do more and more of the right thing because it sets off an endorphin where you get a little high from it. So if we can do more and more good things in the world, 
the environment will solve itself. And we're starting to. We're starting to see alternative energy at least enter the debate. And I think that's a big thing uh, for the for the presidential race here in the United States yeah, and all around the world. About that? You, what do you think about Obama and McCain? Are they really walking the walk or are they just talking the talk here? I think right now both of their plans are very vague. Uh, we've seen some missteps in terms of, you know, giving a, a gas tax, you know, uh, kind of credit for the summer by McCain. Obama obviously misstepped with his ethanol plan. So both of them, I think, are still trying to figure out where is the right walk because it's a delicate balance when you start to look at coastal drilling and how people feel about that versus the real, real environmental effect of that. The same thing with alternative energy plans. And the science, we have to remember, is still inexact because we're talking about the future and who knows what that brings. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Tom Costigan of Market Watch and the author of You Are Here. And I'm John Friedman of Market Watch.